Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Serving's Kitchen with the Cause. If you've watched this show before, you're probably thinking, why is he alone? Well, today I'm flying solo. It's December, the end of the year, the end of season two. There were a lot of organizations that we tried to plan to have on the show this season, but we just weren't able to. So we're dedicating this show to those organizations. We were able to have them on in the past on another show called Douglas County News Exchange. And we're going to feature some of those segments today. So throughout the show, we'll throw to those segments and you can check out those various organizations. And maybe in the future, we can have them on this show. So today, it's just me and you. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook a couple recipes. And as you can see, we do have the beach towel of deception out here and I have no idea what we're cooking. Just kidding, I know exactly what we're cooking, but I'm gonna let you try to guess. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, so today it's December, we're doing sweets. We gotta have those sweets for the holidays. We are doing fudgy brownies, and we're doing white chocolate macadamia cookies. Did you get it? maybe next time. All right, when we come back, we'll be reset. We're gonna start with the fudgy brownies. We'll be right back. All right, we are set. We're ready to cook these fudgy brownies. And the first thing we need to do is uh, cut a piece of parchment paper to fit down into our pan here. So that's what I'm gonna do first. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you get it close. All right, I got my scissors here. And what I'll do, I want it to kind of come up the sides. So I'm gonna get two sides pretty close. And then I'll make a cut here and a cut here, and that tells me where to cut across. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna use the parchment paper as uh, a way to keep the, the, the uh, batter from sticking to the pan, even though it's a non-stick pan. This will allow us to actually pull the brownies up out of there without making a mess, because that's the hardest thing to do is cut it and then get that first brownie out. So this will allow us to pull the brownies out and then cut them. And just as an added layer of protection, we're gonna spray a little bit on here, the cooking spray. It'll, the dogs are uh, going crazy. They're protecting me. All right, so the cooking spray also helps us to have the parchment paper stick. And the dough will also, I mean, the batter will also push down the parchment paper. All right, so as you can see, it's nice and stuck down to the bottom of the pan. And we're ready to make our batter now. So what we're going to do is combine some of the liquid ingredients. We're going to, we've got a half a cup of melted butter. Pour that in. We're going to do a tablespoon of oil, cooking oil. Now I'm using coconut oil. You can use basically any kind of oil you want. And again, it's a tablespoon. If I can get it out. There we go. Get that down in there. Now the coconut oil is solid right now, but it'll mix up into the butter. All right, and then we also want to go ahead and add uh, the sugar. And the recipe calls for a cup and an eighth. So we're gonna eyeball the eighth with our quarter cup measuring cup. There's our cup. And I'll grab the quarter and do a half of the quarter. And you know if I add a little bit too much sugar, I don't think anybody's gonna complain. All right. 
Now we're gonna get that mixed up. Looking good. All right. Now we're gonna add a couple eggs and our vanilla extract. Here's our eggs. Get sugar out of the way. Get this out of the way. All right, egg one. Get that all in there. And number two. Get me something to wipe my hands. Cause I probably better not lick the egg off my hands. Not a good idea. Get those out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Get that nice and mixed up. We're gonna do a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I got a uh, half a teaspoon here, so I'm gonna do two of those. It's getting nice and thick. That is our wet ingredients, or those are our wet ingredients. So I'm gonna take this off. Try to get all of that goodness off of there. And now we're gonna add our dry ingredients. Our dry ingredients will call for a half a cup of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of the cocoa powder, and then a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna sift our flour and, uh, and salt into the mixture here. So here is my half. Yep, there's the half. And can you hand me the sifter over there? Camera person's got double duty. They gotta be the, the prop person. It's the, the silver thing, yes. <laughs> What's the sifter? Love it. <laughs> she cooks a lot, so thank you. So this just takes the lumps out, makes sure it's nice and fine and powdery. It helps it to mix in a little better. I'm gonna add the salt and a quarter teaspoon is about a pinch, so we'll put that in there. Nice. And then a half a cup of our cocoa powder. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. There we go. Now, don't put it back under the stand mixer. Don't use your beaters and, and mix it up. That's gonna whip it too much. What we wanna do is fold. If you've ever made pancakes before, you don't really wanna mix it up too much because it, it just ruins the consistency of the batter. So we're just gonna turn it over, get it nice and mixed up. That's all of our ingredients. We've got our pan ready. Our oven is preheating to 350 degrees and it's already ready. So once I get this mixed up, we're ready to go into the oven. It's looking pretty good. Again, this is our fudgy brownies. It's a lot harder doing this all by myself. Oh, that's looking good. It'll be nice and thick. That's what you want the consistency to be. It's gonna be thicker than pancake batter. 
but not as thick as like a cookie batter. Right in between. Okay, I think we're ready to go into the pan. I wanna get every bit that I can in there. Now at this point, you could add chunks of uh, nuts or uh, peanut butter morsels or you know whatever you want to, to add to it. And then also, once you get it in the pan, if you wanted to, you can top it with, with things. Again, chocolate chunks, uh, gummy work, whatever you want to put on top of it. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna smooth that out. Get it into one nice, even layer. Nice. Again, this parchment paper is really gonna help once we're, we let it cool a little bit and then we can pull it right out. All right. Looking good. All right, so we're gonna get this in the oven and it is going to cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, and while we're waiting on that, we're gonna show you one of our organizations that we couldn't quite get on this season of servings, but we were able to spotlight on Douglas County News Exchange. So check this out, we'll be right back. So last year's Power and Truth was my first experience and I had just started the job too and so it was a very unique experience for me. Um, I got to meet all the like close to 500 students that, that had come to attend. I got to see just what I like to call the hidden curriculum that you know schools aren't able to teach a lot of times but impact how successful children are going to be and um, just really get to experience it, experience it firsthand. This program I believe influences our students to be become great. It, in, it educates them and empower them in the, uh, for the future and also it allows and t uh, it teaches them about uh, negative influences and those are the things that our students need to be well informed about as they trans send into the adulthood, so that's very important to me. I think especially young people, there's a lot of dis distractions they have these days, whether it's outdoor activities, indoor activities, gaming, on computers, but when you hear a spoken word from somebody, I do think that still makes an impact, and I think this conference does that for them. Uh, because of the requirements of teaching standards, it's difficult for schools to provide a forum for students to discuss the topics that are important to them. Power and Truth provides that forum. We send our peer mediators and it's been a great experience for the students. They go in, they take information and bring it back to our, our students. I think it's having a positive impact on them because it's topics that are relevant to them that's happening that they need more information. They need correct information about, not what their friends are saying. I was actually at the first Power and Truth conference, so I've been going for like 18 years. It really encourages like a lot of advocating for the kids um, where they're starting to lead some of the um, interventions we have in the school. You know, they want to be really involved in what they're doing, so they're using that information and trying to bring it back to really have that positive impact on the school. Power and Truth, it was a lot of fun. Like, not only for it to be like a field trip outside of school, but the actual experience, it was very nice. It was a lot of positive energy in there, and I did like learn a lot. For my peers specifically, since I'm telling them so much about what I learned there, I, I believe it has a positive and educational impact, especially considering a lot of the situations that go on in high school and like the stereotypical teenage issues that all of us deal with today, I feel like me telling people about it and them, them telling other people about it, similar to a domino effect, it keeps affecting and rippling on to more and more individuals. We all need to learn about what's happening and a lot of kids want to learn what's happening but they don't know how to find it but the Conference of Power and Truth is very important to that. You know, you look at it as just like a simple expo, but when you get there, it's a lot going on, not only information, but with the motivational speakers. You know, they speak on a lot of stuff that relates to us because they've dealt with a lot of kids like us, and I feel like if more kids were exposed to that, they might like learn something, or they may be able to change their life. I feel like it's opening their eyes, like they can't say they didn't know and I feel like that's very important. The more we can do to invest in our students, uh, it equips them to be successful. And the Power and Truth provides a forum for them to relax and have good conversation. That's not only beneficial to the students, that's beneficial to the community as well. 
We want healthy, well-rounded students. If we can produce those, then the community is a better community because of that. Our brownies are in the oven, and we're gonna get started on our white chocolate macadamia cookies. Again, we're gonna use the handy KitchenAid mixer. Uh, it takes a lot of the leg work out. We can just add everything in here. Creaming the butter and the sugar is much easier, and that's what we're gonna do first. We have a cup of butter, and I cut it up just a little bit to make it easier. It'll come together a little quicker. And I'm actually gonna change the uh, prop here. We're not gonna be uh, whisking, we're going to be beating, basically. So I've got a different, a different attachment for that right here. Get that on there. We want to add three quarters of a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of regular white sugar. So we'll start with the brown. I've got a half a cup measuring spoon or cup here. We're gonna pack it down. And then I also have a quarter cup, so that would give us three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And then going back to the half a cup measuring cup, we're gonna, that is flour. We don't wanna mess up and put the flour in there. Half a cup of white sugar. Now people, we're starting with two kinds of sugar and a cup of butter. I don't think I need to say any more. So we're gonna cream this together. And at some point we may need to stop and kind of push down on the sides. It looks like it's doing pretty well right now. All right, that's looking good right there. And now what we're gonna do is add our eggs and the vanilla and we have some almond extract. So those are both gonna go in. We need two eggs, just like their last recipe. So we're gonna pull that up a little bit. And I'm not worried about scraping anything right now. The liquids that we add will help do that a little bit. Don't want any shells in there. There we go. Put that back down, get it turned on, get those mixed in. And while that's going, we'll go ahead and add our extracts. So we need a half a teaspoon of both of the extracts. We've got the vanilla here. Half a teaspoon. All right, and there's our almond. God, it smells good. Woo! I'll definitely put the tops back on because I know I'll spill them if I don't. All right, now what we want to do is add in our dry ingredients. Now, before we kind of had to fold with the, the brownies, we don't necessarily have to do that here. We're gonna combine the flour, baking soda, and salt, and we're gonna gradually add it into here. So I'm gonna grab a bowl real quick. The reason why I'm grabbing a bowl is so that we can uh, sift our flour and our baking soda and salt before we add it in. Now we need, uh, let's see, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. one 
and two. And this is our half cup. Make sure. Don't want to add too much. All right. Baking is messy. You just kind of have to resolve that, yes, it's going to be messy. You can clean it up at the end. Uh, then we have a teaspoon of baking soda. And again, I have a half a teaspoon here. I have no idea where my teaspoon went. So we'll add to it. Well, I added it right to the stuff, which is fine. You can add it right to the, the batter. You don't necessarily have to put it in here. And then we need a little bit of salt, a half a teaspoon. So that's a big pinch. And now we sift. And you can see a difference between the unsifted flour and the sifted. The sifted looks much finer. It separates the individual uh, pieces of flour and helps the wet ingredients mix in a little bit quicker and more efficiently. There we go. Now we're gonna get this turned back on. And we're gonna add it a little bit at a time. You'll see it start to get uh, powdery, and then when you let it mix a little bit, it starts to look uh, like batter again. Woo! Again, we're making a mess. That's what it's all about. It'll start to thicken up a little bit. And the mixture will start kind of jumping around. <laughs> it's looking good. Add the last little bit. All right, now I do want to scrape down the sides. I have made a complete mess. I might as well just do it all up. There we go. How's that? Perfect. Love it. All right. So we got a lot of dough here. We're going to just scrape that off a little bit and scrape down the sides just to make sure we have everything incorporated. We don't want any unmixed flour messing up our cookies. There we go. Again, we're scraping down the sides and it's looking pretty good. It's basically ready. Yes. Looking good. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to mix any more. I don't want to overdo it. It looks like everything's incorporated pretty well. Now the last step is we're going to add our chopped macadamia nuts and our white chocolate. Now if you buy white chocolate that's not morsels, you will probably want to break it up a little bit, like if you bought a candy bar or something. Uh, but we have morsels so we don't have to worry about that. The macadamia nuts, they are whole nuts and we don't necessarily want whole nuts. So what I'm going to do is put them in here. I have really made a mess. This is awesome. I'm having a great time though. I'm gonna grab my scissors if I can find them. Much easier to open these packages with scissors. And we need a cup of the nuts and we also need a cup of the white chocolate so that's going to really 
add a lot to this, this cookie. All right, now the fun part. I'm gonna leave it open just a little bit so that the air can get out. And now we take out some stress. Now wasn't that fun? That was amazing, I love it. <laughs> All right, again, we're gonna add a cup of these and a cup of the white chocolate. Now you can chop these. Just put them on a, a cutting board and uh, chop them up. But I like to do what I just did for two reasons. One, because it's therapeutic. And because number two, it releases some of the oils from the nuts. I can, I can actually feel it on my hands and that's gonna help incorporate into the cookie dough. Now we're gonna add a cup of our white chocolate. Now before we mix this up, or while I'm mixing this up, I want to invite you to take a look at another segment that we had over the past year on Douglas County News Exchange. This is an organization that we are still trying to get on this show, and we hope you enjoy this, and we hope to have them on the show. Enjoy this segment while we mix this up, and we'll be right back. PRC Medical has been in Douglas County for about 33 years, and we've been in this location here for about 14 years. We do free pregnancy testing. We have limited ultrasounds. Uh, we also have STD testing completely free of charge. Um, also, education is a big part of that STD testing as well. And then we also have our PALS program, and you're seeing a little glimpse of that in this room here. And PALS stands for Parenting and Life Skills, because everything that you see in this store here is donated. We've purchased none of this. This has come from the kindness and the support of the community that genuinely care about women and their children and just want to help. And so they bring in new diapers, um, they bring in new clothing, gently used items that we can then provide to our moms. Because when the mothers come in and they take these classes, they earn what's called mommy money. It's not like real money, it's like a little coupon system, but it gives her access to the store where she can get everything she could possibly need for her baby and even some things for herself. Organizations like AARP that are willing to come in and donate are the backbone of our PALS program. We were told that this program existed, and so what we decided to do is to come over and take a look at what they were doing, and we discovered this lovely store. And we found out that if moms take educational classes, that they were able to get money, you know, not real money, but educational money. And then they were able to buy things that they need for their children and that touched us deeply and we asked how we could help and we were told that we could supply diapers and so that's what we decided to do you know I went before the membership they are so gracious and so generous and I said they need diapers and they responded we're a group of about 33 strong um, women and men uh, what we do is we focus on the needs of people that are 50 and above. We also have a service program and under service we look out into the community in Douglas County so that would include Lithia Springs, the whole Douglas County in general and what we try to do is we try to find a need in the community and we try to service that need in some kind of way. It may not be um, through financial assistance, but it might be just through getting together with that, with that organization or whatever and providing bodies, um, trying to service them with whatever need that they have. We're looking to build our membership so that we can do more service in our community. We want to affect a change within Douglas County. You're welcome to come to our meeting. We meet the first Tuesday of every month at one o'clock at Douglasville Woody Fight Center. 
and um, we are open. And if you don't want to join, perhaps you can contribute to any of the three different um, service projects we currently have. We're a, we're a fun group. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed that. We got all of our uh, macadamia nuts and our white chocolate chips mixed into our dough, and that is amazing right there. It smells so good in here. It smells amazing. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna grab a cookie sheet, and uh, we've got some silicone pads that we were, or they're called sil pads. Uh, so we don't have to, we don't have to grease, use uh, a non-stick pan or anything like that. All right, I'm gonna grab a spoon, a little teaspoon. And what you do is you just grab little dollops, put it on there like that. And we can do these in batches, or you can wrap this up in freezer bags and freeze it. Or what a lot of people do is they'll roll it into a tube about the diameter of a, a good cookie, wrap it in plastic, and then a freezer bag, put it in the freezer, and then whenever you want one or a batch, pull it out and cut slices and then cook them. Now this recipe says that we need to cook at 350 degrees like the fudge uh, for about 10 minutes. Now cookies, they can overcook very quickly. So I like to pull them out when they're still a little bit gooey and then they'll continue to cook a little bit uh, and then they're nice and soft and chewy. So we're gonna get this batch going and our fudge should be coming out momentarily. All right, looking good. I think my cookies got a little bit bigger as I went along. Maybe I'm hungry. So they should cook about the same speed. Uh, they're not too different in size. Again, we're gonna cook these at 350 for about 10 minutes. Our fudge is almost ready, so our cookies and our fudge are gonna overlap just a little bit, but that'll give the fudge time to cool off and then we can cut it. Now, when we come back, we're going to try everything. I can't wait, this is the best part. But before we come back, I want you to check out another segment from this past year's Douglas Kane News Exchange. It's an organization that we'd love to have on the show, and this is just a preview until we can. We'll be right back. So we recently launched our public art initiative and we wanted it to become and use public art to transform the community as a dynamic center and a destination spot for visitors and for our community. So we started with different projects like our fire hydrant project, which is called Arts on Fire, and all the hydrants from the CAC to O'Neill Plaza are now painted, and we did this in partnership with the school system, WSA, and the fire department. We did one school as the pilot of program, it's called Be the Change Project. And with this project, in partnership with the Douglas County School System, we were able to bring words of affirmation into the school, uh, thanks to Principal Kelly at the elementary school. So these words of affirmation um, are so influential in a time where bullying is such an issue, we are able to hopefully make just a small difference with a word saying, be kind or you are beautiful. I know everybody can use those words um, at all ages and to know that you are enough. You are worthwhile. If, if I had to pick one saying, and I think that is something that all of us need to hear and it applies to everybody, that you are enough and you are amazing and you are beautiful and you are kind. And all of that encompasses in those words. Um, that your potential and what you're doing can make an influence and each one of us can make a difference, but together we can make change. We got our fudge, got our cookies, and we got a nice glass of milk. Can't have cookies and brownies without milk. 
All right, so I'm gonna start with the fudge brownies. Uh, I'm just gonna take a little piece off of here. As you can see, we're able to pull it right out of the pan and cut them up. Now, if you don't get these weird chunks that come up while you're cutting it, you did it wrong because you want it to be almost cooked through, but still a little gooey and it sticks to the knife and then pulls up when you, when you pull the knife out. They're perfect. All right, here we go. Two thumbs up. That is good. Oh yeah. I don't know that I've ever had a brownie made at home like with a regular mix that was as good as that. They're gooey, sweet, chocolatey, fudgy. Perfect. And again, you can kind of customize and add whatever mix-ins you want. All right, moving over to the macadamia white chocolate cookie. And these turned out pretty good as well. They're nice and soft. Oh, that's perfect consistency. There we go. That is a quality cookie right there. I have to admit, I've only made cookies maybe a handful of times at home from scratch. And I think I nailed this recipe. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you. Mmm. Can taste the white chocolate, the macadamia nuts. Can even taste that almond extract. Really good. And milk washes it right down. Perfect. Try these recipes. They weren't that hard. A uh, little messy, but you know, that's what happens when you're baking. We hope you enjoyed the show. We hope you enjoyed looking back at some of the seg segments that we filmed with Douglas County News Exchange. Hopefully in the future, we can get those same organizations and charities on here to cook with us. All right, thank you for joining us for season two. We'll be coming back in January for season three. See you then.